Okay, so, <laughs> hi. Um, this series is called Meet Professionals and I'm going to sit and chat with people from various different industries and ask them questions about their job, how they got into it and hopefully, you know, you guys as students, if you're thinking about getting into this industry, maybe you're at college or uni, definitely worth having a look. Today I'm with Connor, who is from the catering, catering and hospitality industry and I just thought we could start off, Connor, by you kind of giving us your job title and just a description of kind of generally what you do. Sure. Um, I'm the executive chef of the Westbury Hotel in Mayfair. It's a five-star hotel on uh, New Bond Street. So uh, just, just off of Oxford Street, between Oxford Street and Regent Street uh, in the centre of London. Nice. Okay. And what does a sort of typical day consist of for you, sort of start to finish? What do you get up to? Um, I come in in the morning, make sure obviously everyone's there. So like a roll call thing, make sure everyone's where they need to be, etc. And then it, it really depends. It really depends. The further you go up you, in your career, the, the more paperwork you have to do, to be honest with you. So the less you're actually in the kitchen. So we have a morning meeting every day um, with all the head of, heads of department. So I'll like be upstairs, what happened yesterday, what's going to happen today, what's happening tomorrow, etc. And then just lots of, lots of plans for, you know, making money, basically. Yeah. <laughs> not not actually not actually cooking as much as I used to be, but okay. Yeah, it's yeah. A, just a different aspect of it, to be honest. Yeah, to be honest, yeah, I never really thought of that. You sort of think of chefs to constantly, you know, in the kitchen, smoking bits going off. But yeah, there's obviously that other side to it where you've got to do a bit more of the the prep and the planning and things like that. So yeah, that's really cool to know. Okay. Um, I was going to ask. Sort of my next question was, what's your working environment like? So obviously, you you are in the kitchen, and what's that like? And then obviously the kind of meetings and parts of that. Because you say you work in a hotel, so sort of what's your environment like? Yeah, um, if I'm not in the office, I'll be in the kitchen because training and development is a big part of um, of why I became a chef as well. So if I'm not in the office or in a meeting or something. I'll be in the kitchen, helping people with recipes, showing people things, or menu development yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff okay cool um there's lots, just, there's lots of free stuff to, you know before you see it before you see a finished plate it already has to go through so many different people yeah you know there's obviously big bosses above me so they have to see it all and they have to okay it before it then gets to the table okay so yeah all well, kind of just an input to the actual finished product it's not just yeah. the person making it okay that's cool and for someone who's sort of thinking about getting into this industry and sort of potentially becoming and doing what you do what kind of qualifications what do they need to do they need to go to college is it university is it more about experience what kind of things do they need to do some people would say go down the three years of college, uh, college route some people would go down the more of a work-based experience route personally mm -hmm. i did an apprenticeship so it was okay. a best of both worlds really yeah a day release um, while i was working in a hotel so i had a days of very hands-on experience in one day of dealing in that knowledge with going to college so that was that was the best route for me personally mm -hmm. for the more academic route some people just like to get to get really stuck in predominantly chefs are very kind of get stuck in kind of people anyway yeah. so it just depends how you are as a person how you like to learn yeah exactly okay and what's the fa your favorite aspect of your job what do you sort of wake up in the morning like oh, i can't wait to do that um I like the people. It's a very, um, it's a very family, family style kitchen that I like to, I like to run anyway. So I, I love spending time with the people that I work with and building the relationships with those people and then seeing how far they can develop themselves as well. Yeah. Nice. Um, how long have you worked at the place you're at now? I've been here for about 10 months. Oh, okay. Nice. Nice. And what did you do previously? So before you were in this job? Right. Prior to this, I was at the Royal Garden Hotel on Hartley Kensington, which is also another five-star hotel, a little bit bigger than this one. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Three years as a sous chef. Okay, cool. So, and then sort of moved on to this. Nice. Could you <laughs> tell me something, um, something really unique about your industry or perhaps sort of the strangest thing you've been asked to do? Are there any sort of places you've gone that you might never have been to or sort of dishes you've made? Something that's sort of a bit, a bit out there. Um, I do, um, me and me and my dad and a couple of other chefs, we do a charity dinner twice a year for, for various different charities, but it's in Wellington Barracks, 
in um, just behind Buckingham Palace. And we have to bring all of the food from upstairs in the mess downstairs, and then we have to serve 350 people out of a corridor on folding tables and out of hot boxes and stuff like that. It's, it's a strategic nightmare, but it's always, yeah. it's always fun. So, yeah, nice. How many, people would, how many people attend that event? Is it quite a big? About 300, between 350 and 450 oh. people. It's usually a boxing event, so. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, but everyone that's watching the boxing, you got to feed the boxes as well. And it's, um, it's always a good laugh, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, no, that sounds great. <laughs> so in terms of sort of skills, obviously, you sort of pick up a lot on the way, which I'll sort of ask about in a second. But for someone who's sort of, again, starting out their journey and thinking about becoming a chef, what would you sort of say are the key hands on skills, but also sort of personal skills Like, what would sort of make them become a good chef, a good cook for the industry? Sure. I mean, knife skills are obviously um, obviously a big part of it and also it's hard to, it's hard to uh, common sense but cooking is very common sense based mm -hmm. you know if you can see something burning you know it's probably not supposed to be yeah. like that yeah. you know aside from a few from a few different things that you'd like that more charred flavor if something looks overcooked it probably is mm -hmm. so it's just about working out the, the common set common sense as aspect of it as well mm -hmm. Okay, nice and sort of, yeah, and I guess then my next question would be kind of what skills have you kind of picked up along the way? Obviously, there's things like that that you should know starting off, but is there anything that you've learned you didn't know how to do before or, you know, things you've really developed in yourself, I guess? Yeah, back to, it goes back to the, the kitchen being a family thing. It's having a team that all have different learning needs. Everyone develops in different ways. You know, if you planted 10 seeds of of different of different flowers they'd all need different specific things to, to help them grow about yeah, yeah. realizing that from when they are you know very very young in their career how to get them to their peak potential in the fastest route possible yeah so it, that's that's what i've learned over the past couple of years being in a more managerial position and looking after a lot of younger people mm -hmm is is really honing in on how they need, need to be taught and need to be developed yeah definitely it sounds a lot sort of it's really nice that you sort of talk about it in the sense of it being quite like a family and sort of a team it's sort of you're part of something as opposed to you know just sort of doing your own thing which sounds sounds really nice sort of thing um why did you become a chef and get into this industry you know is it purely a love of food or was it you know you like that environment what was it that sort of made you think yeah i'm gonna do that I mean, for as long as I can remember, I all I wanted to do. So yeah. I was, um, that's a chef as well. So he was um, he was a big inspiration to me when I was growing up. Anyway, you know, we'd always took cook, cook together and stuff like that. But it's um, it was just it was just something I really just just wanted to do from such an early age. And yeah. I'm quite a driven person anyway. So if I want to do something, I will I will do it. Get it done. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I'm always one of those people that's never been quite sure so it must be nice to sort of to have a goal and be like this is what I want to do and you've obviously done incredibly well so that's really good um what's your what would you say is your biggest achievement in your career what are you sort of most proud of it could be an event or you know like you say helping others or something like that yeah I I, I get asked this every now and again and I always mm -hmm. kind of go back to the it's, it's the achievements that I, that I help other people get that mm -hmm. give me the satisfaction you know i i did a lot of competitions when i was quite young between kind of 16 and 21 i was doing lots and lots of competitions and then from 21 i've just been helping other people do their competitions mm -hmm. and it's the uh, you know that that sense of achievement from someone else's achievement yeah, you know yeah, that's what, uh, that's what means the most to me yeah nice and just for those who sort of aren't sure what what do you mean by a competition what what is that uh, there's various different cooking competitions to, you know, the Wessex Salon Culinaire, for instance, where there'll be 10 grills and hobs and etc. you know, set, chef kitchen setups. Mm -hmm. And then you have to do a dish, a specific dish, maybe it'd be lamb, like a prime cut of lamb. You get 30 minutes, 20 minutes, etc. to do a competition, to do that dish. And then it'll be judged by a, by a panel of industry professionals. Okay. And then you can kind of place yourself on... You know how where you are in the industry and yeah. how you match up to other chefs of your age 
Nice. Okay. And for someone again, who's maybe just starting off and thinking, okay, I want to get into this. Where would you find out about these competitions? Is it something that is sort of well publicized and you can kind of look up online? Is it a body? Like how would you sort of go about finding them? There's, there's lots of different uh, organizations. So you've got stuff like the Craft Guild of Chefs, the Master Chefs of Great Britain, the British Culinary Federation, the Royal Academy of Culinary Arts. They're like the main four. Uh, the Worshipful Company of Cooks, for instance. There's lots of different organizations that put a lot of money into uh, the younger generation of chefs and they usually run the competition. So it would be on any one of those websites. Okay, cool. That, that's great, great signpost and great to know. Um, what piece of advice would you give for someone kind of like you're saying the seeds and sort of helping people grow? What piece of advice would you give to someone who's just starting out in the industry? Uh, there's, there's always something to learn from someone, whether it's, whether it's a positive aspect or whether it's a negative aspect, there's always something to be learned. So if you see someone that's being almost not very good at their job, you can pinpoint what they're not very good at mm -hmm. and take that and then move forward knowing that you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing that, you know? And then if there's yeah. someone that's very good at their job, is taking those little aspects, you know, taking, taking those good aspects and the negative aspects and then building your own, your own mm -hmm. path. Yeah, learning from it and all that stuff. Okay, great. And um, where do you think your industry will be in sort of five to 10 years time? Do you see it growing, changing, certain aspects being different? Because the reason I ask is there's a lot of industries that are obviously going to be affected by things like AI, developments in technology and is that something that you know people starting off now should be conscious of is there going to be any big changes and obviously <laughs> it's your opinion but can you sort of see anything on the horizon i mean a, a recipe is just just words on a page you know a chef has to put the soul and has to put their life into that recipe you know if it says three grams of salt it depends what kind of salt you use yeah. you know i have to add more you might have to take it away so people are always going to need to eat you know, when I started out doing this, uh, a few family members are in various different locations. You know, my uncle was a plumber, for instance, and you just think you're always going to need your bathroom fixed. You can't have a, you can't have a robot come and do that. Yeah. You know, it's exactly the same as food. People are always going to need to eat, so mm -hmm. people are always going to need someone to cook for them. So yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't really see it change. It will just, it will grow. I think it's the third biggest uh, industry in the in the UK yeah. anyway. So. Yeah, the only way is up, really. Yeah, nice. So I guess a closing thought then, Connor. Is there anything you'd sort of final thought or just kind of something you'd like to say again to anyone who's interested in sort of getting into the catering industry and particularly a chef role? Just kind of a, a final thought. <laughs> um, picking a mentor and picking various mentors, you know, reach out to people. Chefs and people in general are usually very nice people. There's only a very small percentage that are not. So... You know, if you are nervous or if you wanted to, to get a little bit of advice on something, message someone on Twitter, you know, message someone on Instagram or some sort of social media platform because nine times out of ten, you're going to get a response that will be a positive one and yeah. be a confidence to yourself. You know, I, whenever I'm at events where there's lots of young people, etc., I am throwing my business card out left, right and centre. And it's about taking those business cards and making the most out of them, you know, really getting with people in those positions because you never know where they can take you in your in your journey yeah definitely and again like you said earlier about it being sort of it's very team orientated and sort of connections and things so i imagine you know the sooner you build that base of the people and you know you sort of get the know-how and things like that it can only be a good thing so amazing yeah, absolutely. yeah connor thank you so much for chatting with me today and um, we're going to do a whole series of these videos but for this one, guys, if you have any questions or would like to comment on it, we'll get back to you. I'm sure Connor will lend a hand if you've got any Absolutely. questions like that. Absolutely. I'm happy to help. And yes, yeah, stay tuned and we'll have more to release soon. So thank you for watching.